morning. Again. Yeah, so still awake, still alive. Very good. Um, I'm Olivier Laplace, and I'm a technical director of SOA Software here in France. Um, we are a software provider uh, providing solution for uh, services and API governance and API management, which is really the topic today. Um, it's 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 very nice to be here today uh, uh, and, and to see how this event evolved in just one year. So again, thank you to uh, WebShell and Faber Novel for giving us the opportunity to speak with you, to exchange uh, on experiences. Um, and in this beautiful theater, uh, what better to start with uh, uh, Woody Allen uh, regarding this uh, uh, this joke about uh, War and Peace, uh, this famous 2,000 pages book. Um, and of course, uh, among those 2,000 pages, it speaks about Russia. But uh, I guess that uh, it speaks also of something else. And what we can do is to transpose what um, um, a customer API, uh, um, a chief API officer could say about API management. And I guess that somewhere he could say something like, okay, I understood API management. And it involves very Facebook, Netflix, you can add uh, Amazon, and uh, for sure, uh, Google, and several others. Uh, it's true. It's true that those giants really created their business on most of their, lots of their revenue on top of their APIs. Uh, the thing is also is that um, most of uh, API experimentation or things are based on those giant experiences. And what I would like with this presentation is also to tell you that the good news is during this last year we learned, and what I would like to try to do with you is to share a little bit of those learnings beyond uh, those giants, which are still interesting. I'm not about to tell you of not copying them, neither of doing the reverse but it's really to see what you can take advantage of. Um, at SOA Software, we, we work with large organizations. Uh, and what drives those companies, those large organizations for a change? In fact, there are mainly two factors. Uh, one is the cloud, private, public, whatever, not matter. Uh, the second one is uh, Mobility with smartphone, tablets, and uh, connected TV, car, connected cars, and Internet of Things, whatever they are. So those are really changing the game, and they are really changing those companies needs to do their business. But what is really specific uh, around those two concepts of cloud and mobility? Why they are really changing the way those companies need to do their, their business. And there is one factor which is very important, which is the speed, the pace, the timing you have, uh, the, the speed to deliver, the, the speed to implement, the speed to deliver. Everything is going very fast, and you need to, uh, to go fast if you want to survive somewhere. Uh, Maybe you remember this sentence uh, from, uh, from the bank sector, which was too big to fail. Uh, maybe here, the, the challenge for those companies is something like too slow to survive. So what can I do? How, how can I put in place strategy in order to address those, uh, those challenges around the cloud, mobility, or both of them? And those that, that could be seen as constraints because it requires new projects, new implementations. They could be seen as constraints, but for winners, they are not at all. They are seen as opportunities because in most of cases, uh, constraints, are the constraints represent a perfect cradle for creativity and innovation. And be prepared of this because the API could really be the baby that will support and enforce um, your creativity and your innovation. So it's really for those enterprises a question of reinventing uh, at least part of their business with APIs. Mm. 
I guess you are all familiar with uh, social networks, and uh, you should know about uh, this, um, which is a uh, part of a slide of a presentation of a deck. Um, believe me or not, I'm no longer a teenager, and um, uh, I'm not about to tell about, uh, to talk about sex neither. So, be safe. Uh, the thing is, for topics and subjects like big data, it's very difficult to find the entry point. It's very difficult to find the roadmap. It's very difficult to find your own way. Uh, 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 what do you want to achieve exactly on, on the path and the strategy you want, you, you want to follow? Um, frankly, it can be the same for API because we have the hype, we have the buzz, we have a lot of articles, there are some buyouts in the sector. But the thing is, uh, where is the road? What is the strategy? What do I need to put in place my own strategy that will be a successful uh, uh, API strategy? And as I told, you, I told you, I want to share with you some learnings. Uh, during the last couple of months, last couple of weeks, uh, I worked and discussed with different customers from different sectors. Uh, couple of them, car maker, telco operator, a bank, um, food consumer, Oh, please don't leave it. It's not time for the food, not right now. Uh, so very different sectors. Uh, but they, they are all in the same kind of situations. And what I, like, what I would like to do is to share with you some learnings from them. Um, the first one, first of those learnings, as I said, with those different uh, uh, customers, is, um, excuse me, yeah, the first one is one year ago, and this is maybe the first learning is, is to myself, in fact. One year ago, I was convinced about something, really convinced about, about something, which was for a, a company to go for an API strategy. The right path was first to define, to determine uh, its business strategy. Then, to decline the business model. And this would, this would give you the right API strategy. And I was really convinced about this, and I was convinced that this, this, this was the on, only real um, right path for a successful. And I was wrong. Not completely wrong, but I was partially wrong. The truth is, and it's also based on all those discussions and work with uh, our customers, there are different entry points. There are different paths. Uh, this business strategy, business model, API strategy is what I would call a, a strategic approach. It is true, it, it may happen, but what happens for lar large enterprise? And maybe it's a little bit uh, 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 around the question why uh, just asked uh, for, for the, within, after the presentation uh, before this one. Uh, it's very difficult for large enterprise to transpose uh, into an API strategy and going backward, connected the dot backwards, you know, uh, into a business model and into uh, a business strategy. It's very difficult, even if they are convinced, and most of them now are convinced that API is really something very interesting and useful for them to leverage new business. But it's very difficult for them to transpose this into a real business strategy, then business model, then API strategy. So what they try to do is uh, rather to have a more pragmatic approach, which is more a kind of um, mock-up approach where they would go through different steps like try, fail, learn, try, succeed. And during this pass, what they want to achieve is to connect the dots and to be able to find on the way their own business models. Maybe some will give up, but I'm definitely sure that most of them will take advantage of those learnings and will find their own path on their own business model. And th th this is what they are doing. So this is the first learning I want to share with you. There is no only one entry point, but there are several ones, and you need to consider all of them. Most appropriate for you. The second one is 
the fact that now those companies uh, understood API, what it could bring to them, uh, but in order to get advantage of all of these, they, they need to consider API uh, strategy as a whole project by itself, and not only a subset of existing projects or application. I mean, okay, I have an application, I have some services, uh, this could be an API, I'm just considering this as my API project. No, they really need to consider um, all of these as, as a project by itself. Or, you know, it raises some questions. It raises some questions. Like, for instance, about organizations and roles and functions. Uh, as a joke to answer to Woody Allen, uh, I use this role and function of chief API officer, which I guess most of the time does not exist in companies. But we, we can definitely uh, think that it will exist in the future. Or maybe this role will be addressed by the chief marketing officer, I don't know. But there, there will be new roles that will raise in order to address those, those API management and API uh, strategies. But really, the second point is uh, being able to address uh, those API strategy as a project by itself, not only as a subset of something existing. For the third learning I would like to share with you, I would like to introduce you to introduce it uh, uh, differently, because it's a more generic one. Uh, in fact, if you consider those typologies of uh, companies on the top left for you, uh, you have the web giants. On the top right, you have some of the hottest uh, startups in the web or in the mobile sector. On the lower, you have the lar large organizations. And what is common to all of them considering that they decided, they are interested about, about addressing API, what is really common to them is that they need an API platform. So what I suggest to do with you regarding this third uh, learning is to try to uh, make a kind of anatomy of what uh, a platform, an API platform can be. Um, merely it's two elements, two pieces. The first one is a portal. A portal where you will centralize, you will provision, define all your APIs, all the APIs that you want your consumers, developers, partners, clients, to onboard with and to use, for different reasons. So, it's a social and collaborative portal. It's really a mediation tool between, at one level, the APIs you propose, and at the other level, the application that the different consumers will develop based on your uh, APIs. And it's also a mediation where you will have the possibility to mediate with all the different consumers that will use your APIs. Uh, if you think at Google, Google started uh, by developing different APIs, and now they have a portal. It's very easy for a developer to get there, to find the right and the appropriate uh, API that uh, this developer wants to use, to onboard. On the other side, for Google, it's very easy to follow, to control, to manage how their APIs are used. So this is the first piece. The second one is the gateway, which is very useful in, in our customer, with our customers, where it's very interesting to take advantage of all the existing assets they have already. And it's really all about um, giving them an easy access, an easy way to expose, uh, 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 to get closer to the IT and to expose into their portal um, the existing asset that they have. So at the deeper level, let me check the time, it's okay. Um, some of the capabilities that could be useful at the portal level, uh, once again, uh, uh, a social and collaborative portal. The first one, you may want to consider your API as a product, and you may want to package it at, uh, as a product. What it means? Let's consider that you have a, a new API or an existing API in your IT infrastructure, and you want to expose this API in your uh, portal with different uh, protocols, maybe with different uh, content messages type or bindings, 
whatever, we don't care. Uh, but this API has different kind of operations, maybe some read operations, some write operations. And what you may want to do, because you have different consumers, you may have gold and silver consumers, you may want to package your API for one, for the gold uh, consumers that will have an access to all the read and write operations. But with the same API, you may want to expose it as a package where only the read operation will be, will be visible and accessible. So it's really a question of packaging your API as a product, which means that you will have the capability to address all the functionality around your API that you need if it's considered as a product. The same way, you, you, you may have a requirement around the quota for different reasons, technical ones or business ones. It can be to uh, protect your internal uh, IT infrastructure. It can be to uh, uh, limit the access for uh, the consumer that don't pay, but not for those who are paying. Uh, it, whatever the reason I, and still in the continuity of packaging your API as a product. This is something that will directly be available within the portal to provide different experience to your different consumers. Um, and in the same way as when you need and you want to provision your APIs into your portal, you have a workflow for doing that, uh, a very easy workflow. In the same way, you have workflows um, that will help and guide your different uh, consumers in how they will use the APIs, how they will work with you or together. For instance, you may decide to invite some partners to test and use your APIs, but you may also want to keep them private or to allow them to work closely in a collaborative way between each other. So this is also an interesting and useful point that you may find in developer portals. On the other hand, you have the gateway, which is uh, one of the functionalities is really more to uh, allow you to uh, take advantage of your existing assets. And the idea is really, it's very useful, whatever the strategy you choose, a strategic approach or a um, more pragmatic approach. Uh, it's very useful because it, it, it's in the same spirit as a Fab Lab. You know, the Fab Lab is something uh, uh, invented or created 15 years ago in the MIT with two drivers, open and uh, collaborative. And it, it, it's really uh, the spirit to allow you to uh, very rapidly take advantage of your assets at different levels, mediation. I won't go very deep in, in detail at the technical level. We will have time uh, after the presentation for, for that if you wish. But could it be at mediation level, at micro orchestration level? It could be at the security level uh, for authentication, authorization, OATS, or threat protection? but it could be also uh, uh, addressing PCI compliant requirements. Uh, it, could be also, it could be also um, uh, some uh, paging or caching in order to improve the end user experience uh, regarding the application that will be developed for mobile uh, based on your API. So there are very different interesting stuff that, that are useful at this level. So we are very pleased very close to uh, the end. Uh, what I would like to recap is the three learnings first. The first learning is, uh, one, there are different entry points. Um, you need to choose the right one, which is relevant for you. It can be a strategic, but it can also be a pragmatic approach, where you don't really have clearly the business strategy, but you have objectives, and you will go in a mock-up approach, try, fail, learn, try, succeed, and you will define uh, the business model on your way. The second one is to consider uh, the API strategy as a project by itself. It's not only a question of addressing a subset of something existing. You really need to address it uh, as a whole project. And the third one is requirement of a platform, and the platform built on two pieces, the portal, uh, where you centralize all your APIs uh, and mediate with your consumer, with applications using your APIs, and the gateway 
that uh, get you closer and take advantage of your existing assets. Uh, very important. So with that, you should be prepared for innovation. Very good. I guess we'll have time for a couple of questions, but I, I wanted to add that we have a booth, and there are at least uh, two reasons why you should visit us at, uh, at the booth. At our booth. The first one is that uh, we can meet and you can meet with uh, other colleagues from SOA Software and we can discuss furthermore uh, about uh, all of these and other interesting stuff about API management. And the second one is uh, because if you want to let your, uh, not your credit card, but your business card, uh, you may have the opportunity and the chance to win, to win an iPad. So it can be great uh, for you. So don't hesitate. Uh, and that's it for me. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody's there. So uh, we have a couple of minutes for questions in English or in French. And we try to translate if, uh, if necessary. OK, no question? Oh, okay. Okay, so thank you very much and have a great day today and please visit us. Thank you.